This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today, uh, we are going to be speaking uh, with Hector Del Corto and Pablo Estigariba uh, about the Stowe Tango Music Festival, uh, which is coming up in beautiful Stowe, Vermont, August 18, 19, and 20. Uh, welcome, Hector and Pablo. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, very nice to see you again. And, uh, and I, I just wanted to tell you that the festival has already started um, a week ago because we have our um, students here that they are preparing for the big dates on the 18th, 19th, and 20th. That's great. Um, yeah. Now, can you tell us uh, first a little bit about yourself? Um, well, let me introduce uh, Pablo. Pablo Estigarribia is uh, our guest artist, together with the trio of Victor Lavazen, um, Horacio Cavarcos, and Pablo Estigarribia. And he's also a faculty member, so he's coaching the, the students, the piano students. And, um, and he can tell you a little bit about uh, what his experience is with, with this music and his career. So, excellent. Well, I I gotta say I'm one of those lucky guys that got to play with um with some tango legends back in Buenos Aires. I I, I lived there uh, and I was born and raised there. And um, at one point I started coming uh, to the United States uh, a little more frequently, and I ended up living in New York for a few years. That's why we, that that's when we came uh, close with uh, Hector, and we started taking upon the mission of bringing. The, the 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 true tango artists of tango history to the states to um, to teach and to communicate what Argentine tango is real is really about and um, I can't tell you the smiles we've seen from American and 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 musicians all over the world that get to experience uh, this uh, this you know this transmission of uh, Argentine heritage firsthand. That's great. Well, tell us, uh, uh, Hector, a little bit about the, the festival, how long it's been in operation and uh, uh, what's uh, going to be happening in the next uh, few days. Mm -hmm. um, sure, so the festival started in 2014. So we this is our ninth year. We are preparing the big, uh, um, a big, celebration party for the 10th anniversary of the festival so that will be next year but this year um we have students from all over the world we have students from japan from korea from canada from us from argentina and uh, the idea of the festival is to coach musicians that are not tango musicians and some of them are already tango musicians but we bring the maestros the, the people who um, have been in contact with with the some of them were part of the the um, golden age of tango and um, and they come here and they it's it's um, the way that you give the artistry of tango to students is not through a book it's not through through a manual it's by performing by getting coached and um, by being exposed to these tango legends. So that's the mission of the Soul Tango Music Festival. And uh, so we have been working for a week with bandoneon players. I will show you later what the bandoneon is. I know you know it, but for those people who haven't been uh, exposed to this instrument. And I'm a bandoneon player. I'm, a, um, I'm from Argentina as well. And then Pablo was coaching the pianists, and today is when all the string players arrive. So a typical tango orchestra has strings like violin, viola, cello, and double bass. It has a piano, and it has this instrument called the bandoneon. And mm -hmm. this year we have about 10 bandoneon players that are going to be joining the orchestra. We're expecting quite a big orchestra this year. It's going to be a big orchestra. So we have to make everybody play together, and that's a big, big task that we take every year upon us. And, and 
we have the help of all the effort that these students put into into learning this art form. And you're going to have a competition to the Bandoneon, correct? Yes, we have the Che Bandoneon competition, and that will be on Friday. There are three finalists that were selected already, and they are here, and they will perform. They perform as a soloist, and they also perform with the orchestra. And uh, then um, the the judges will decide who is the winner for, for this year. Um, as I always say, competitions are a way of, of uh, having people looking after um, other people to improve the level of playing. And that's our mission here, to, to improve the level, level of bandoneon playing. In Argentina, you have many bandoneon players, many teachers, but in the US, we don't have that many. So mm -hmm. we have to create it. And that's our mission with the competition as well. That's great. Could you just give us uh, an idea uh, of what how the festival is going to proceed? It's starting on the 18th and continuing through the 19th and and the 20th. Uh, and uh, give us an idea of the, the location and also the, the program that's going to be going on. Um, we have a, a few different places, but um, all the information will be at um, www.stotango.org. And you will find all the information on the venues, but um, one of the venues is top notch. We have uh, um, milonga classes in there. We have milongas in, in here. This is a beautiful venue. And uh, that is with passes. So people will buy passes. But unfortunately, those passes have been sold out for a while. So what um, you can still, I believe, there are not many left, but there, there might be a few left. Um, it's the concert at Spruce Peak, and that will be on the 19th and um, at the Spruce Peak Performing Arts Centers, the Center. That's when we have the orchestra, the big orchestra, about 30 musicians. And also there is a milonga where people will be dancing to tango. So that's on Saturday. And I hope everybody will come and have an experience and exposure to this beautiful music from Argentina. I just got to add that that concert is really exciting. That's the culmination of two weeks of very hard work. It's like a tango retreat, you know, hanging out with this tango legends. And uh, it's very exciting to see how much work uh, can be done in only two weeks. Amazing. Now you're going to have a, a major tango legend with you uh, this year. Mm -hmm. Tell us uh, about him. Well, the tango legend, one of them, because uh, Horacio Cavarcos is also a tango legend, and, and he's a bass player that had played with uh, many of the, the famous orchestras in Argentina. And But Victor Lavagen is uh, he is a legend not only as a bandoneon player, but he is also a composer. And he was the arranger to many of these uh, famous orchestras in Argentina. So it doesn't get better than that. Um, he's still active, very active in a project called Escuela uh, de Tango, Emilio Valcarce. That's in Argentina. It's a program that um, students also from all over the world come for two years and, um, and they train to perform tango. So they do it in two years. We do it in two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's imagine how intense these uh, workshops are in here. Um, but Victor Lavagen is one of those uh, artists that you have to look at, listen to, and learn. And um, and we learn a lot. Even myself and Pablo, who we both are professional musicians, we every day we learn with uh, with somebody like Victor Lavagen. Victor's one of those guys that um, even though you don't know him, you know his work because mm -hmm. he's behind a lot of iconic uh, recordings and uh, you've probably heard him play even though you don't know it. It's, 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 uh, it's very exciting to have someone like that among us. He, he, was, he was already active when he was 14 years old in the 50s and uh, he never looked back. He, he's still recording, he's still composing is quite an inspiration to have someone like that around. I looked them up on Spotify and uh, 
came across some of his albums and uh, shared a few of them. And uh, it, it's yeah. amazing material. Yes, and um, he is actually, um, it's some, I shouldn't say, I don't say this, okay, but he's 88 years old and he plays like when he was 35. It's insane. And it's it's really an inspiration in in many sense of the word. That's amazing. Give us an idea of some of the other faculty members you, you have or uh, performers uh, you're going to have during the uh, uh, the festival. Sure, we have uh, my quintet is always uh, the artists in residence, and that's uh, Gustavo Casenave on piano, Pedro Giraud on double bass, uh, Sami Mardinian on violin and Gisuo Concello. And uh, we also will have uh, some performances by my son, Santiago del Curto, who is uh, 15 years old, but he's, he's already an accomplished um, clarinet player. And uh, we have Pablo, we have Horacio Cavarcos, and we have Guillermo Rubino, who is one of the younger generations of musicians, but a very experienced uh, violin player that um that is also an educator and uh we are very happy to have him this year that's great that's besides awesome. that yeah we have dancers and tell uh, us about that i was just going to ask you about the, the yeah. dance workshops tell us about that yeah we we know that um when we say tango people are you know expecting to see dancers um um we um every year we bring um two couples that come to dance with us. And this year will be Miriam and Leonardo and Giovanna and Guillermo. And these are very well-known tango dancers. And uh, Miriam was uh, the star of uh, Forever Tango. And uh, they are going to give some classes as well as perform at Spruce Peak. And uh, people will have the chance to see what real Argentine tango it's about um, because many people know tango as a part of ballroom dancing and it's very far from um, that way of dancing tango the argentinian tango mm -hmm. so ballroom tango is more about figures and choreographies and also people dance away from each other and many times you will see the rose on their mouth. We don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. And people dance very close. And it's a coordination of the bodies like no other. And uh, that's what people will be able to see at Spruce Peak. One of the things that I see uh, here on the program is up close with the maestros. Uh, tell us yes. about that. That will be a conversation and uh, where people can ask questions, but we also tell the story of each one of uh, these maestros. And um, it's quite uh, an interesting story because these orchestras have been very, very active in the 40s and in the 50s. And then there was a revival around the 90s that grew a lot until what is today, 2023. So tango has been around for 100 and almost 150 years and uh, and these people are part of that history and it's really a great opportunity to be able to be close to them and ask questions and and get to know what really happened in the history of tango and i see also you're going to have uh, workshops on musicality tell us what that's about yes so um in order to be able to dance or to enjoy the music as a listener, it's important to know um, not not to get. There's a lot of information to grasp in the music of tango. There are many layers, and having a musicality workshop helps you to um, be able to appreciate the art um, in in a much better way. It's like going to a museum and you know nothing about the art. Mm -hmm. You will cruise through the, the paintings or, or any piece of art and enjoy it as a view, but you really don't know much of what's going on. But if you have an insight 
of what is the art about, the art form about, or what the story is behind the painting, then you have a much greater appreciation and enjoyment of, of the art. So this is the same with, with our music. Well, in addition to the uh, classes and, and the, the hands-on work, tell us about these afternoon milongas that, that's going to be part of this. Yes, so the afternoon milongas are, um, as I said before, people know tango through the dance mainly. There were shows in that made tango famous all over the world, like Tango Argentino or Forever Tango. And uh, one of the ways that you experience tango is listening, but the other way that you experience tango is by dancing. Tango is a social dance. So it's not just what happens on top of the stage, it's also what happens as a community. There is a big community of tango dancers all over the world. And these milongas give the opportunity to people to, to mingle, to have a, a fun dancing, and also to have the connection with the musicians, which is very rare these days. I think it's important that that experience, you know, that that milonga experience, that that is, you know, get together, dance tango. That's a very important part of tango heritage that still happens in Argentina every single day, and uh, you know that that's part of what we do for tango in Buenos Aires. And to be able to share that with people in the United States, share that experience, I think it's it's very important because you know many many musicians today even were were exposed. To tango by by dancing first mm -hmm. so i think it's a very powerful tool and it's a very important part of our heritage and uh i'm, I'm just happy that this is happening in such a beautiful venue as well wonderful tell us about the the, the concert that's going to be taking place and, uh, well, actually yeah. first tell us about the orchestra the uh, orchestra yes so the orchestra will be um it's it's part of the the whole um two weeks that we are working here, the part of uh, the result of these two weeks. And the idea of having the maestros join the students or the students joining the maestros in um, um, to experience the music firsthand. And um, the orchestra prepares for these two weeks very intensively. And I just, mentioned something that happened this week. There are uh, many students, not many, but a few students that come here with the idea that we will give them a chart and they will have the melody and some few chords and they will just gather with other musicians and everybody will play the same thing. This is nothing like that. This is very, very, very serious orchestra that we have amazing arrangements from Pablo Stigarribia, from Victor Loagen, arrangements from the very famous orchestras like Aníbal Troilo, Osvaldo mm -hmm. Pugliese. And we coach these musicians, musicians very intensively and we perform with the orchestra. So this orchestra is the highest level orchestra that you will find around the world. And, um, and it's all with musicians that are not only, um, they are not amateur musicians. They are professional musicians that are experiencing tango uh, at this time, but they know how to play their instruments. So the the level of musicianship is very high and the orchestra sounds amazing. If you go to the website, stotango.org, you will hear some samples of it. Mm -hmm. You'll give us an idea of how many, I, I know you're, uh, we're recording this and you're at the festival and the festival itself is going to be the, 18th, 19th, and 20th. But tell us how many people are participating now and how many people uh, either as guests or uh, concert goers or, or performers are involved in this uh, tango festival? Yeah, musicians, we have um, about, we, we keep the number um, to a limit because we don't want to not pay attention to each one of them. So we have about I would say 30 musicians, or so maybe a little bit more. And um, besides the guest artists and, and the quintet, my quintet, and um, in terms of audience, we expect about 500 people every year because that's the capacity of Spruce Peak and the capacity of the venues that we have 
in Stowe. That's why we get the passes sold out very quickly. And uh, so next year, if you didn't get one for this year, next year, check the website website earlier, and uh, and you might be able to enjoy the the whole um, package of the festival. And uh, now you're up there now, and could you tell us some of the maybe the experiences uh, you've encountered with, with people and musicians and maybe newcomers and and old timers and people just starting and and people very experienced. Could give us an idea of the atmosphere uh, that's going on up there now. Yeah, so we have many of the musicians that come every year, and some of them had to skip ye some years because of work. And we have new musicians every year. So the musicians who were here before are able to help the ones that come um, that, that came this year only. And uh, these musicians are from, as I said before, Japan, Korea, Argentina. We have from all over the world. And um, so it's it's a great atmosphere because this is not including the competition it's not a competition where people look to beat each other but they look to help each other so the students listen to each other and uh, the the participants listen to each other and and get, make a constructive criticism and they make progress and also the the musicians that are performing they have the opportunity to all be um in a, a soloist at some point to experience the the being a soloist, and uh, in terms of the people that that participate, the dancers, there is a big community in Stowe itself and of tango dancers. But there is also people from Montreal, people from Massachusetts, Connecticut, um, New York. So there is uh, there there are a lot of tango dancers that come and experience the festival. And this is one of the largest in the world, uh, isn't it? Or Absolutely. The largest in uh, North America, correct? Absolutely, yes. That's for sure. Yeah. That's great. Um, and you said before that you might give us a little sample of uh, the music. Uh, are you ready to uh, do that now? We are almost ready. So you just give me... Actually, do you want to play something for Dennis? I could. And, then, and I'm going to get my bandoneon. Excellent. So Excellent. I'm going to move the image to the piano. All right. And hope, hopefully, and you can see it. Okay. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, is that one of your own um, compositions or uh, who wrote oh, that? Oh, no, this, this, was a, this was a piece composed by the great master Horacio Salgan, which is kind of like our, our Astor Piazzolla for tango pianists, you know? Yes. Um, yeah, I got to say it's very exciting to, to get to, to, to share time with, with people here. They come from the best schools. Her technique is insane. And... Um, the fact that they, they get the opportunity to be trained by people like Victor, it's, it's I mean, sometimes I think if, if this was jazz instead of tango, that would be like hanging out like with Miles Davis, you know? Mm -hmm. It will be something like that. So um, when, when we were talking about the atmosphere here, um, 
I think appreciation is a word that comes to mind as well. Everybody seems so grateful to have the opportunity to have someone like that. I mean, he's 88 years old. He jumped into a plane, came to Vermont, and he's playing and hanging out with, with people that love tango and want to experience that firsthand, which is pretty amazing to me. While we're waiting, I just want to say, because uh, okay. of the time that uh, uh, the uh, festival is going to be going on August 18th, 19th, and 20th, uh, the, one of the largest uh, tango music festivals in the world. Uh, we're going to publish the website, so if anyone wants information, they can go there. And meanwhile, let's uh, hear from uh, Hector, who is an Emmy Award winner. And, um, actually, I have to correct you. It's a Grammy. <laughs> oh, Grammy, Grammy. Yeah, it's kind of You're a, a Grammy. I'm a, I'm a Grammy. A, I'll tell you, it's been kind of busy with all this uh, so, yeah. Grammy. Uh, I used to make a mistake and say Latin Grammy Award. No, you are a, a Grammy Award winner. Well, Pablo is a Latin Grammy Award uh, winner. And uh, so, yeah, we have a few Grammys in, in, Laying around. in, in, this, uh, in this festival. That's um, wonderful. Yeah, so I wanted to show you a little bit of this instrument. This instrument is called the Bandoneon. And it's, this is not mine. There is a collection of bandoneons in the room behind that will be donated this year to the Orquesta, Orquesta Escuela in Buenos Aires. And this instrument was invented in Germany to replace the organ in processions. And um, it went all the way to Buenos Aires in Argentina and became the voice of tango. So this is... Uh, an instrument that is not an accordion. It's called bandoneon. Mm -hmm. And um, it sounds a little bit like this. We will play. What should we play? What do you feel like? Maybe... Uh... There is something very... That nobody knows. Okay. The, so you go, you're going for the anthem, huh? Yes. Well, one of the anthems. The one in D minor or the one in G minor? The one in D minor. Okay, you got it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Absolutely marvelous. That is fantastic. Thank you, uh, and uh, that is just a sample of what people uh, can see and participate in at the Stow Tango Music Festival. That's a wonderful way to conclude. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you both for being here and for performing and say hello to Jisoo for us and Santiago and all the other uh, people involved. And uh, this is uh, just a great way uh, to uh, spend uh, days learning about this wonderful art form and meet these wonderful performers. Uh, this is uh, Dennis McMahon. We've been speaking about the Stowe Tango Music Festival taking place August 18, 19, and 20 uh, in Stowe, Vermont. Uh, my guests have been Hector Del Porto and uh, um, Pablo Estigariba, uh, La Libia, uh, who will be uh, uh, organizing and performing and running things uh, up there. And uh, they're going to need a big rest, I think. But that is just a beautiful piece of work. Thank it's you, thank Dennis. You. Uh, thank you and, so much. And it's always a pleasure to to share this time with you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you around. Thank you. And this is Dennis McMahon for Positively Vermont. Thank you for watching and most of all, listening.